Hey guys, it's Hink here. You might have seen my videos on PRP in the past, but there's been some new data out and I want to address PRP or platelet-rich plasma and its role as far as penile health and even its potential at actually increasing your penis size as well as some data that I recently found that helps to potentially support this. So that's what we're going to be breaking down today based on real clinical trials. So stick with me. Once again, guys, if you haven't seen my video on PRP before or the P-Long trial, you need to actually like watch those videos. That being said, so what is PRP? Platelet-rich plasma, okay? What they do is they inject blood, typically from your arm, if you've got nice vascular arms like your boy Hink, and they bring it out into a tube, and they centrifuge it down, and it separates into like the plasma and the red blood cells. You can see in this diagram that, that Callie's going to put up here, then you take that platelet-rich plasma, and then that's what you use to inject into different parts of your body. This can be done, there's like vampire facials. I actually had PRP injected into my hair for hair growth purposes. I didn't see any benefit, but whatever. For today's purposes, we're going to be talking about injection of the PRP into the penis, which is commonly known as the P shot. Typically what they do is with that PRP, somewhere between basically five cc's ish is normally injected into basically each corpora cavernosa on either side. And you can see in the diagram here, there are certain cases where they will actually do an injection into the glands or the head of the penis as well. But typically it's one shot on each side. Now, why is this potentially helpful here? Well, I'm going to put an excerpt on the screen. So platelet-rich plasma or PRP, blah, 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 novel generative agent demonstrates, um, contains various platelet growth factors produced from whole blood, such as fibroblast growth factor, platelet-derived growth factor, PDGF, and vascular endothelial growth factor, or VEGF, which can help injured penile tissue and restore erectile function can help heal injured penile tissue. So there are some important growth factors, which could be important for honestly growth for increasing the size of your penis, but also recovering from significant injuries. What do we have the most data for? Well, without a doubt, the most data we have for its role in mild to moderate erectile dysfunction, okay? There's actually two papers that were recently published around the same time that were both meta-analyses, meaning they looked at all of the published data when it comes to the role of PRP in erectile function, basically weeded out all the dog shit data, kept the good data, and only analyzed that as a large group to try to figure out what uh, it actually works or not. So this first trial is called Evaluating the Efficacy and Safety of Platelet-Rich Plasma Injections for Erectile Dysfunction, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis of Randomized Controlled Trials. Now, once again, I'm going to have the links to all these in the description. Most of these aren't available unless you have a specific subscription to some of these journals, but you can still at least read the abstracts. Highly recommend you do it. Once again, guys, clown in a mask that, you know, I cosplay by putting on scrubs as a medical professional, okay? So in this paper, there's a couple important things from the introduction that I want to discuss. So it does a decent job talking about some of those growth factors, but it talks about one of the primary causes for erectile dysfunction. Now, what is that? Of course, it's impaired endothelial function, limiting the release of nitric oxide and reduction of vasodilation, okay? So guys, I can't stress enough the importance of maintaining healthy endothelial cells, the, the, basically the cells lining the blood vessels, and how important that is in penile health. Hashtag vigor, okay? If you know, you know. Now, interestingly, they actually bring up a couple of different papers where using PRP actually was able to restore the damaged corpus cavernosa tissue and reverse nerve damage. So my guys that have things like hard flaps or have injured themselves or just have poor erectile function, there is major potential implications of using PRP to help recover from that. So here are the three trials they looked at. Basically, I'm not going to bore you guys. It showed that without a doubt, the use of PRP did improve the basically international like index of erectile function or like IIEF function significantly okay so it's a very clear benefit on the individual papers and on the actual meta-analysis now this is important is because there are actually some published papers which looked at prp versus basically a sham so injecting prp versus injecting just saline and it actually showed no difference as far as erectile function so these papers are important guys before i go any fit further just take a second to hit the like button it costs you nothing it means a lot to me and go ahead and subscribe because it means a lot to the channel so the next paper we're going to briefly talk, at is an, a talk about is another meta-analysis. I'm not going to bore you with the long title, but Callie's going to put it on the screen here. Once again, another meta-analysis, honestly, largely looking at the same group of papers, looking at the same three randomized control trials, concluding the same exact thing. This one was just far less helpful, so I'm just going to leave it at that. Now, here's where it gets a little bit more interesting. So what about PRP for size? Well, first, we're going to look at a paper that was initially published back in like 2016. 
and it's titled Combined Treatment of Injecting Platelet-Rich Plasma with Vacuum Pump for Penile Enlargement. What they did was they looked at 1,220 patients with small penis syndrome, essentially, okay? So these weren't guys with like Peyronie's disease. These were guys that had otherwise normal functioning penises that wanted bigger Ds, and they injected them with PRP, and then they were instructed to pump. Now, we're going to get into the flaws of this paper, but one of the things that they, how they instructed the people to pump was to pump for 20 minutes daily for five months, okay? So guys, here's a published paper showing, you know, daily pumping. So they're not saying, oh, do it for five days, then take a rest day, but I'm not going to go on my like, why you don't need rest days rant right now, okay? Watch my video on rest days, but more importantly, watch my pumping playlist. So if you do choose to pump, you can actually learn how to pump correctly, what pressure is used and what the real data says. The results of this were super interesting because they were actually to quantitatively say after each injection, this is how much you should expect to grow. And so when it comes to length, as far as the mean length, they grew seven millimeters in length per injection. So that means after five injections, they grew 35 millimeters or 1.4 inches. For girth, not quite as good, but five millimeters per injection. So that means after five injections or five months, they grew 1.2 inches on average. Guys, that's freaking ridiculous and it's insane. But guys, this is a published abstract, okay? This is not a fully published paper, but it is a published abstract in a medical journal. Now, I felt so proud of myself because I discovered this paper and I hadn't seen anybody talk about it. Then of course, I was doing a little bit of research and my guy Simtech7 posted about this two years ago, probably over two years ago, but I don't know, great minds think alike. He basically had similar conclusions. Well, he most of just posted the abstract, but it still is a very interesting paper. Important note, guys, this was not published. Typically, if you have good data, what happens? And I've actually, you know, believe it or not, uh, you know, published multiple abstracts into actually fully functional papers. It is annoying as absolute S, but it is important because anybody can just say, here's my abstract, but you actually have to have a good paper that has to be peer reviewed. You have to publish the charts. You actually have to have written out like well thought out sections. And this paper did not make it to that phase. And I think it's because there's a little bit of cap going on in, in this paper, okay? Especially as far as those gains. But let's look at another published paper. You guys have already seen my video on the P-Long probably, but I'm going to rehash it, okay? In the P-Long trial, which combined basically pumping, extending a citrulline-based supplement and the PRP shot or the P-Shot. Now, guys, you can see this graph here. On average, they showed that you gained about 0.8 inches in length and 0.5 inches in girth in six months. So that's massive gains. This is much more reasonable than that last paper that we showed, which demonstrated like 1.2 inches in length in just five months of PRP and pumping, okay? Now, this is published data. This was actually published in a journal. The journal was like the journal of like Eastern Ubekistan or some kind of journal. And honestly, the article, I don't blame Dr. Brandeis. He was on a live stream with me, guys, and we kind of hashed it out. But he's a busy doctor. It's hard to publish when you're a busy doctor, okay? Look at this protocol for pumping. As you can see here, guys, in his published paper, he says they pump to 5 to 10 millimeters of mercury. That's insanely low. So, guys, of course, I have my high-quality peak male physique pump here. But let's see if we can zoom in. And you can see, guys, that the, the inner ring is actually millimeters. And it starts at 100, 200, 300, okay? And so 5 millimeters of mercury is like like that right there maybe even less than that actually because of the time interval i mean because of the interval going to 100 that is an infinitesimally like small amount now contrary to popular belief i try not to be a prick so before i made the video i reached out to his team and i said hey i want to clarify this is an insanely low amount of pressure are you sure this is what you actually used and they reached back out and said yes he did clarify that he did mean five to ten inches of mercury which is a big difference but to me, like, if I can't even trust that they got the methods right and they know appropriate units of measurement, how can I actually trust the data? So, guys, there's a lot of flaws with these papers. It is published data, okay? I'll allow it that it's published in a journal, but one only has an abstract, you know, one, honestly, it's just not a very well-written paper. No offense, Dr. Brandeis, but, you know, I'm sure you, you know that because you know how to look at medical literature. Of course, there's no before and after pictures, and it's just like, trust me, bro, this worked. The other main thing is the financial incentive. The guys that are publishing these papers are the ones that actually do these P shots that can charge thousands and thousands of dollars for these P shots. And so they have direct financial incentive to make it work. So guys, I went to the streets and tried to do a deep dive in people that have published and getting bigger about PRP. And it's been, results are all over the place. Now, 
here's an experience here. And a guy says basically like, I got the P shot. It did not do anything for me at all. Okay. Complete waste of like 6,000 Canadian dollars. Here's another commenter that responded to that and said, I feel like the P shot does work. I tried it and I gained an inch by also working out and pumping in manuals, seen results in nine months. You know, we have these conflicting reviews. Here's another guy, did nothing for me, save your money. Another guy, I went to Dr. Pollock in Vancouver, does nothing. Here's a guy that actually claims that he gained like over an inch by doing the P shot. And I'm not trying to be the D police, but like the thing is like, it's, it'd be so easy to prove this. But like this guy was pushed a little bit and they're like, why don't you have before and after? And he's like, oh, I just didn't think to take a before like picture. No proof of even his current size. And like these people that claim that it works, I don't know, maybe it's just skeptic hint coming out. But like, how do you know that it's not just some guy that is that is trying to promote PRP? OK, but I challenge you to do your own research, as always, form your own conclusions. But like the vast majority of the people that I've seen say it doesn't work. So even BD has done the PRP. Now he had some things going on, like he had a reaction to the lidocaine and then like caught COVID or some, something like that, that, you know, muddied the water a little bit. But overall, he did not get significant results. And he will tell you that. Now, what could explain these differences? Well, guys, here's an important paper here. It says platelet-rich plasma growth factor concentration varies in men with erectile dysfunction. And so what they did is they basically looked at the blood from like otherwise healthy young people and older guys with erectile dysfunction, and they looked at the concentration of growth factors. And in the healthy population, the concentration of things like growth factors and whatnot were significantly higher than the dudes with erectile dysfunction. So the point is, Maybe in some of these guys that said PRP didn't work, they had lower concentration of these growth factors, and that's why it didn't work or didn't work as well for them. So that is something to keep in mind. So guys, what are my thoughts? Well, the evidence is overwhelming of a few things. Number one, this works for erectile dysfunction and has serious implications as far as recovering from injury. In my opinion, the anecdotal evidence is pretty overwhelming that this does not work for enlargement purposes, contrary to two published papers showing that it does dramatically increase size. And I have personally yet, now keep in mind, I don't get on Reddit anymore, but I have personally not come across somebody that had a before and after that actually clearly demonstrated an increase in basically permanent size from doing the P-Shot. Now, Healthline, they have some questionable advice, but they did put out an article about the P-Shot and they basically say it can potentially help with sexual dysfunction and erectile dysfunction, but there's no evidence that it actually helps with penile enlargement. Reasonable take. One of my biggest problems is that in these papers showing that it works, None of them have a clear mechanism of action. I did find an excerpt from one of the papers looking at erectile dysfunction, and they say, the exact mechanism of how PRP improves erectile function is not yet fully understood. So once again, that's one of my biggest issues is like, yeah, we think this will work because we've injected into like random other things and we've seen some benefits. So it kind of makes sense. But like they can't say this is how and why it works. That really bothers me. Maybe we'll have that information coming up. But they have some theories so platelets can contain various growth factors such as FGF, PDGF, and VEGF. These growth factors can act as a catalyst of the regenerative process with the recruitment of stem cells, modulation of the immune response, and even stimulation of angiogenesis. So all of those things potentially have a role when we're talking about for enlargement rather than injury recovery. In my opinion, is one shot once a month, is that going to be enough to really just like you know, oh, you weren't regaining at all from doing pumping, and now all of a sudden you apply a pump and you gain 1.2 inches in five months? Absolutely not. I think that that is absolute cap, as the cool kids say. And the other thing is the quality of actually your blood that you're injecting or that you're getting the PRP from matters dramatically. So how about me? Would I try it? I'm not gonna lie, guy. I'm very intrigued. Now, I'm older than basically like almost all of you guys, except for a couple of guys like older breeder on the channel. I'm into my mid 40s. So I'm interested in PRP just for the potential regenerative benefits to my D. I'd love for my D to feel like it was 18 years old again. And if it could speed things up potentially when I'm doing like, you know, my feed manual stretches and pumping like routine, could it potentially speed up gains? That would, that would be fantastic. So I'm literally on the fence to the point where I'm about trying to about to start trying to look up urologists near me that might be able to do it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you want me to get PRP and document my journey and show like, did it make a difference for me? I'm not going to like just, oh, well, we have enough people that want to do it. I'm going to do it. But, you know, it would be helpful to know if you guys would like me to make a video about trying it and doing my journey. Maybe I'll make it like a vlog or a vlog. I don't know how. Dr. Hank got the plug on the health, yeah. Got you thinking about your wealth, yeah.
In his office, no stealth, yeah no stealth. Pinnacle of that below the belt, yeah uh, Checks and balance, he's managing Working miracles, no damage Got you covered, no panicking In the clinic, no vanishing